The true society is where the man can be free without being rich, strong without uniform, heroic without getting killed, fair without having to believe in immortality, solidarity without being watched, and superior without being cruel. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the World Today News. I'm Lisa Gums. And I'm Joel Poe. Today's news will discuss the role democracy plays in Latin America. Out of the 38 Latin American countries, many of them have developing democracies. However, before, they have come a long way in comparison to 35 years ago, when Latin America was in total chaos. Let's go to Karime Alvarez to give you a little bit more insight on the topic with expert Richard Feinberg. Hello, I'm Karime Alvarez coming to you from UCSD with Richard Feinberg, an expert on Latin America. Would you tell us how Latin America is dealing with their democracy today? And would you explain to the viewers what exactly you're an expert on? Uh, I've been involved in Latin America now for about over 30 years mm -hmm. when I was in the Peace Corps in Chile back in the late 60s and early 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very pleased to be able to say that Latin America today is very different from what it was 35 years ago when I was first down there when I was just finished with college. Back in those days, uh, and in the 70s into the 80s, you had wall-to-wall -wall military dictatorships, sometimes very harsh governments that killed thousands of their own citizens. Fortunately, by and large, that's history. Today, in Latin America, you have elected democratic governments. Democracy in Latin America was a concept that was unfeasible at best and unwanted at worst. In 1978, the tide slowly began to turn until the late 1980s, when it came to elected civilian government. In 1980, 120 million Latin Americans, or 39% of the region's population, lived in poverty. By 1985, the number had grown to 170 million. By 1990, it had grown to an estimated 240 million. How did Latin America overcome their issues? Uh, I think basically people learned in some countries, not all, the right lessons. When they saw what happens when you don't have democracy, when people start fighting in the streets instead of through the ballot box, um, what, end, what happens? Uh, terrible violence, death, uh, destruction, and, it, and you wreck the economy as well. So you accomplish nothing, uh, and it's a terrible tragedy in the end. So people decided, well, instead of fighting in the streets, let's sit down and try to resolve our problems. Let's also recognize that uh, democracy is really the only way you can do that. If you have a, a, an authoritarian government, uh, it may last for a little while, but what happens when a great leader dies or is displaced? You get serious problems. Um, the other thing people uh, recognized uh, is that uh, democracy is the way to produce economic growth and integrate into the global economy. There was the view in Latin America that, well, let's just have our own little economy cut off from the rest of the other countries, cut off from the United States, cut off from the world. That doesn't work. You've got to open up. You've got to trade. You've got to invest. You have to have tourism. You have to let people travel back and forth. That's the way to get new ideas, uh, to get economic growth, and ultimately higher living standards and more happiness for everybody. According to many political thinkers, a true democracy flowers best in climate characterized by such principles as co-equal executive, legislative, and judicial branches. Tolerance of opposition viewpoints, whether expressed on the floor of a Congress, in free and independent mass media, or in the streets. Most Latin American countries are still lacking in this regard. Well, I think when we say democracy, we have to keep in mind there's not just one single system. Mm -hmm. Our democracy is very different from the democracy in Great Britain, for example, which is in turn is very different from the democracy in France. It's not a single system. So when we say democracy in Latin America, the democracy in Mexico right now is a very different set of institutions than there is in Chile, for example. So there's lots of room for creativity, for national decisions and preferences, uh, for people to decide uh, how they want it in particular, in the context of, of, of basic democracy, the fundamentals, by which we mean uh, you can say what you want, freedom of speech, different political parties, no one stays in government forever, uh, you have rotation, and you basically have sort of the, a, a rule of law, not arbitrary rule in which they throw away the key. Latin America has by far the greatest income inequality of any region in the world. Underlying that inequality is ethnic and social inequality inherited for the period of Spanish rule. 
The Spaniards took over native populations, but didn't get rid of them. As a result, descendants of the native people make up a large part of the population in Bolivia, Ecuador, and Peru. Many don't even speak Spanish. These populations have been denied access to education, and this is the single most important cause of income inequality. The effects of this inequality are easily shown and affects in the development of democracy as well. In fact, in the 1989 Brazilian elections, 70% of the voters had not finished six years of schooling. In Mexico, inequality is so big that the life expectancy of the poorest 10% was 20 years less than for the richest 10%. For the last 50 years, Latin America has lived through a sustained period of economic and social deprivation. If it were not for drug exports, immigration, and other informal economic factors, it would have been much worse for many nations. Where there's a major inequality, democracy runs very weak. Surveys show that belief in democracy runs uh, low, especially to the opinion of the poor. In other words, making a democracy work in many countries of Latin America is like a baby taking its first steps. The process is slow, but once it's accomplished, the region will only be better off. I'm Jewel Poe. And I'm Elisa Gums, and this is the World Today News. Thanks for tuning in.